Once you've turned off your pop-up blocker, you should arrive at a screen that looks similar to this. There are two main options for using the pump selection tool. The first is to search using conditions of service, and the other is to select directly from a list of pumps. You should use this option if you have an idea about what flow capacity you need from the pump and how many feet of head the fluid must be pumped, and you want to compare different models. Choose the second option if you know exactly what pump you need. For this tutorial, I'm going to select this option first. At the end, I'll discuss how to search using conditions of service. Remember, you can close this tutorial at any time. For this example, I know that I'm interested specifically in motor drive pumps. Therefore, I'll select the motor drive checkbox from the list. Once I've selected the product line, I come up here to the upper right and click the next link. A list of models specific to the product line that I selected is returned. When I see the one that I want, I click its link. What the screen shows next is the technical data sheet, which contains all the technical details, including the performance curve, that I want to see about the model I selected. What I can do at this point is scroll down the page and see exactly where the efficiency point of this pump is on the performance curve. Back at the top of the page, I can now enter some customer-specific information by clicking on the header information link. What this does is add another level of information to the technical data sheet of the selected pump. In this space, go ahead and enter any custom information about your customer that you like. To start, just click on one of the field entry boxes and begin typing. For this example, I'm going to type in JNP Waterworks. Let's say I have a customer reference number that's associated with that company and it's 1001-G. So I'll type that in there. Next, I'll enter the service code that my business uses for a brief description. Our item quantity is going to be 1. I can even enter my own quote number here in this field. Note that the system automatically saves the date and time of the quote, which will remain on a document that is printed out. When I've completed entering my header information, I'll simply hit Recalculate up here at the top of the page. Once the page refreshes, you can then print out all of the information, customer information included. To do this, I'll simply click on the print link up here at the top of the page. Do not use your browser's print feature. This will not produce the quality data sheet that you can print. Please use the link. Once you click that print link, a second window opens. The tool creates a PDF document of the data sheet you're displaying in that second window. And from within that window, you can save that document to your desktop or print it off for your own files. Whenever you're ready, you can close that secondary window and you'll be right back at the data sheet that you were on before you printed. Another type of printout you might be interested in making from the data sheet would be to just print out the performance curve for the model. To do that, go to the top of the page and locate the performance curve link. Once you do, go ahead and click on it. The tool then returns a page just showing the performance curve. And like we did previously, to print this out, we'll go up to the top of the page and click the print link. Remember not to use your browser's print function. Except this time we have two options. We can either print it with a portrait orientation or a landscape orientation. I recommend choosing the landscape orientation or landscape curve. When you close the window containing the PDF document, you'll be right back at the performance curve. Recall that there are two main options for using the pump selection tool. We just finished discussing how to select directly from a list of pumps. The second portion of this tutorial talks about selecting a pump using specific conditions of service, as well as how to compare performances for different pumps. Remember, you can close this tutorial at any time. When I click Search Using Conditions of Service, the page you see here is displayed. This is where I can enter some very basic operating conditions. For instance, in this example, I have an application requiring 10 gallons per minute, and I know that I'm going to have to pump my water 350 feet. If you're more experienced with pumps and pump installations, you can get more granular by expanding these other search criteria and entering additional data. With my basic operating conditions entered, I'm going to go ahead and click the next link. A list of product lines is returned. Notice that both acceptable and unacceptable product lines are displayed. Unacceptable product lines are grayed out, but you can still select them just for comparison's sake. For our example, we are interested in a motor drive whose speed criteria is synchronous and not variable. 
So I'm going to select Motor Drive and then click the next link up here at the top of the page. This returns a results list of many models. If I want to see more information about a particular model, all I have to do is locate it in the list and click its link. Its technical data sheet and performance curve data will open. But in this example, I'm going to choose three models that I want to compare. To proceed with my comparison, all I need to do is pick the models by selecting their corresponding checkboxes in the Display Thumbnails column. For our example, I'm a customer who prefers the MGP line. So I'm going to select MGPS10E-1, MGPS10G-2, and MGPS20G-2. Note that this first model we're selecting has a question mark associated with it in the result column. Now what does that question mark mean? It means that it's a near miss. And that near miss reason is stated over here under its own column. The reason for the near miss is because its rated head is above the maximum impeller diameter for this model. If you want to hide near misses, you can just go up here and click on the hide near misses link. It's a toggle link, so to bring those near misses back, just click the link once again. Near misses simply mean that some models will work better for some applications than others. You may want to select one of these near miss models anyway because of the cost, or it has other operational qualities that you want from the pump, or any variety of other reasons. With the three models selected that I want to compare, I'll click on the Thumbnail Curves tab at the top of the results list. This gives me a great bird's eye view of the performance curves of each of these three pumps that I've chosen, and where exactly on the performance curve of each of these pumps my basic operating data hits. Now to see the data sheet in a larger picture of the performance curve, all you need to do is click on the performance curve graphic. Now you've simply opened the technical data sheet for the selected curve. Just as was discussed in the first half of the tutorial, the header information is still available for you to enter customer information, for instance for a quote, and print the technical data sheet with the curve and the customer information. If you don't recall how to do this, in the next several slides repeat it. One more thing to note. To get back to the thumbnail curves of the pumps you selected, simply hit the back button on your browser window. To enter customer header information, simply click the blue triangle to add customer information to the datasheet. In this space, go ahead and enter any custom information about your customer that you like. To start, just click on one of the field entry boxes and begin typing. For this example, I'm going to type in JNP Waterworks. Let's say I have a customer reference number that's associated with that company, and it's 1001-G. So I'll type that in there. Next, I'll enter the service code that my business uses, or a brief description. Our item quantity is going to be 1. I can even enter my own quote number here in this field. Note that the system automatically saves the date and time of the quote, which will remain on a document that is printed out. When I've completed entering my header information, I'll simply hit Recalculate up here at the top of the page. Once the page refreshes, you can then print out all of the information, customer information included. To do this, I'll simply click on the print link up here at the top of the page. Do not use your browser's print feature. This will not produce the quality data sheet that you can print. Please use the link. Once you click that print link, a second window opens. The tool creates a PDF document of the data sheet you're displaying in that second window. And from within that window, you can save that document to your desktop or print it off for your own files. Whenever you're ready, you can close that secondary window and you'll be right back at the data sheet that you were on before you printed. Another type of printout you might be interested in making from the data sheet would be to just print out the performance curve for the model. To do that, go to the top of the page and locate the performance curve link. Once you do, go ahead and click on it. The tool then returns a page just showing the performance curve. And like we did previously, to print this out, we'll go up to the top of the page and click the print link. Remember not to use your browser's print function. Except this time we have two options. We can either print it with a portrait orientation or a landscape orientation. I recommend choosing the landscape orientation or landscape curve. When you close the window containing the PDF document, you'll be right back at the performance curve. Thanks for taking the tutorial. You can take it again at any time.